you take that as your identity, not more, that's enough. And that is the one that is deciding to go with the truth and not with the ego. That's it. Danitsa, daughter of Tanya from Serbia, is your identity and it is connected with the materiality of this body where holistically the entire experience of the non-dual happens. It's a simple thing, this living. It's very simple. That's why even the greatest spiritual masters experienced samadhi, but they had to come back. Enlightened beings had to re-enter this system and, and integrate. They had to reintegrate finally. So here it's about integral living. This teaching is for that specialized bunch of people in this world who are deeply, deeply interested in self-realization. Two questions on my mind. Your name. And the first one is connected. First, with your name. Yes, yeah, sorry, my name is Danica. Yes. And I'm curious about when you're talking about us witnessing ego on one side and then the truth impulse. My question is the witness. So for me now, I'm feeling like there are three elements. And if you could like elaborate a little bit on the distinction between there is this impulse, the truth, and then there is the witness that can discern between two. I guess my question first is mainly connected with witness itself. In this teaching, there is no witness as a conceptual entity. The witness now is... What is your name? Danica. 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 And what is your mother's name? Tanya. Tanya? Right. And Danica, where were you born? Serbia. Serbia. So Danica, daughter of Tanya from Serbia. You take that as your identity. Not more, that's enough. And that is the one that is deciding to go with the truth and not with the ego. That's it. This body has a name. It was born somewhere as a mother, that at least we know for sure. That's, it. That's the identity you take. So there is no witness and witness consciousness and this is witnessing that. Or in the tradition of the Neo-Advaitins who leave out the surrender, it's like I'm watching myself and then I'm watching myself, watching myself and then I'm watching myself, watching myself, watching myself and all that subject, object, witness, consciousness, discourse is eliminated right at the start because all those processes are conceptual processes they're not holistic processes they're not taking into account the materiality but if you are in a body then why is the aim to free yourself from the body and move into a cosmic state because you are technically a spirit then, if you're not attached to the body or only attached with a thin thread. So, Danica, daughter of Tanya from Serbia, is your identity and it is connected with the materiality of this body where holistically the entire experience of the non-dual happens. It's a simple thing, this living, it's very simple and it's about going with the truth in each moment. Of course, you are not going to be perfect. Mistakes happen, you fall out, you go with the ego, but that's the thread, the red thread along your life that you follow. That's what keeps you in touch with the truth of your existence. That's what keeps you humble. That's what keeps you surrendered. And that's what keeps you with a smile on your face. And you won't be 80 years old and still looking for the truth somewhere and not having found it, which is what we see 
in places like Tiruvannamalai, even here in Rishikesh, 80 years old, done all kinds of sadhana, been in meditation for 10 hours a day, and, and out there in the cosmos, all forms of samadhi known, but not yet in touch with the truth, because it is not just that, it is this that has to know this. That's why even the greatest spiritual masters experienced samadhi, but they had to come back. Enlightened beings had to re-enter this system and, and integrate. They had to reintegrate finally. So here it's about integral living. So you don't have to go out and then reintegrate. It's integral living. And how integral? By keeping the identity at a minimum, so it doesn't expand into ego, mm. and taking that identity and using it to discern between the ego and the truth, and acting as much as possible from the truth. The system, the body, does what it has to do as an instrument of the truth. And training for that is bending, 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 doing seva, doing all the things that a spiritual seeker does and has to do. Maintaining a clean home. You go to so many homes where everything looks beautiful, the best sofas and the best material and the best uh, TV and everything, and then you open the, the place where the garbage is kept and it's just dirty. Not everywhere, but in a lot of places. There has to be cleanliness, there has to be as few objects as possible, or if you have many objects, taking care of all of them, properly giving them attention. The colors you wear, the food you eat, that's how you develop and grow that, that solidity around you, and then the inward solidity also grows with it. What do you speak? What do you, what do you utter? What are those words that come out of your mouth? Uh, that's where you have to pay attention. Basically, what do you utter? What comes out of your mouth? What goes inside your mouth? What do you surround yourself with? And that strengthens that process of bending. What is still kind of my question is even around the name, and for example, as you said, Danica, daughter of Tanya, um, meeting different people in the last three years, I really met many people who even have difficulties with accepting their name. In positive psychology, there is a lot of like healing, how they call it, mother wound, father wound. And in a way, I fully understand the simplicity of Danica, daughter of Tanya. Like it's in a way super simple. But then do you feel that it also can actually awaken the ego in terms that now again, I can tell myself my mother is so sick or my mother is like this. And that also that can add to actually being in my ego if this makes sense. If you choose to psychologize your life, then it might be that way. But this is being spoken to spiritual seekers. This is not being spoken to people who want wellness treatments. That's a different story. This is a very highly specialized bunch of people. Some of them for months they've been around. It's a specialized group of people who are specially interested in one thing. It's how to cut that particular nerve behind the eye, which is 0 0.001 millimeter, and how to stitch it back together. This teaching is for that specialized bunch of people in this world who are deeply, deeply interested in self-realization. I want to touch the truth with this fingertip now and I'm yearning for it, and I'll, I will do anything that is needed to reach it. So for those who are psychologizing their lives, this would challenge them too much. You know what I mean? If I say you're Danica, daughter of Tanya from Serbia, let's say it's another person, then she starts to go into Danica, but that name, it evokes uh, uh, fear in me. Now I have to deal with my fear. And instead of saying, no, that is nonsense you're talking, it shouldn't evoke fear in you. Just bend down now and accept something for once in your life. You know, that's also a way to look at things and to be tough and all this woke, sort of tribal self, uh, 
self, what is the word for it? Like, I don't even know. Inquiry? I don't, know. I don't, know I don't think it's inquiry. No. I don't think so. It's, no, it's not questioning. It's more pampering. And, and uh, no, not aggrandizing. It's pampering. It's the I becomes everything to look after. I have to do me. No, you don't have to do you. You have to do the truth, not you, mm. that way. Of course, if you have people who want to actually pamper their own egos, this is definitely not going to be easy for them. This is for spiritual seekers who want to know the truth of their existence and uh, are ready to go to whatever lengths it takes. And then, of course, Danitsa, daughter of Tanya from Serbia, will say, okay, it's... It's a name. I don't like the name. I don't like the mother. And I don't like the country. Uh, I don't mean you now. I'm just saying it in general. But I will take that now as a tool in this process. It's a, it's because actually, what is a Danitsa? Like, where is Danitsa? It's, it's a name flying somewhere in the air. It has nothing to do with you, actually. But you take it on because you're simplifying so that the complex processes of self-realization are not bogged down right at the beginning by a discourse about something which is in itself anyway nothing. Mm. The only thing that is real is the truth. It's the only thing that's real. That experience is real. So in order to reach that experience, you have to simplify things. Because otherwise, you know, people start saying, yeah, who am I? Uh, you're Danitsa, daughter of Tanya from... Serbia. If you don't answer it with that, your next answer is, I'm not this, I'm not that. Neti, neti. It's a realization, not an approach. It's a realization. I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this. I'm... I am not. There's no such thing as I. That's, that's how it is. There's no I. Which is why, to keep things real and simple and this, you take the name, you take the mother's name, and with that identity, you start the bending process. And it's fascinating how fast you can move into that state then. There's no more questioning about uh, who is the one that is observing, the one that is doing. You know, people who come to the satsangs and say, yeah, but uh, I'm not here, my body is here. So at one point it becomes what? It becomes what we call, in simple English, madness. One cannot confuse the philosophical excursions, segues, with the material reality of this existence. If one does that, then one has the mad people. So to keep it simple, and if someone says, well, I had a trauma with my mother, then there are two ways to go about it. One is go the way of psychology, where you go into the past, you try to find out, why did I have this trauma? What did she do? What was the trauma in me? How was it caused? Etc., etc. And the other way is to say, it's the past, it's not this moment. This moment is the truth. And this moment is the truth. And this moment is the truth. And that's how you live moment to moment. And the trauma of the past is where it belongs, which is in the past. And you support that process with seva, with spiritual service. So would you say that we don't feed the story, a story that we can constantly repeat? Absolutely. It's a narrative that is only going to reduce you to more suffering. It's the ego taking over this moment. The ego doesn't want you to experience that thing called love. Because if you know what love is, you are not anymore a victim. Yeah, the story makes us a victim in a way. It's like, poor me. I have this trauma. I mean, not consciously, but in a way, it's the energy of... I've been through something tough. No giving in to that. Only love. Only love. 
when we were on the on the yatra we did to santiago de compostela we didn't walk towards santiago de compostela we walked away it was away from religion to the soul to love that was the way we did that historic journey along that path a very powerful pilgrimage and that is the path it is the path to love it is the path away from that narrative of suffering to the soul to the truth to love